need a scarecrow after what you did. Cause all of the birds know that I'm almost dead. I'm barely breathing. I need an angel after what you did Cause you were the devil You mess with my head You lied to my mother Don't wake me up Cause you're just a ghost inside my head You're just a ghost, you're never there You're just a memory on my lips Cause you're just a ghost Help me see I'm blinded by your love 
Hello, and welcome to Build Up Devs Live. I am one of your hosts, Brian Clark, joined by your co-host, Danish. Danish. And welcome in, everybody. We're happy to have you here. And we have a very special guest that we're going to be bringing on today. We're going to be talking about the benefits of tech communities. So please join me and Danish giving a warm welcome to our guest, who goes by Caroline Kern, or rather is Caroline Kearns, but goes by Lily Hazel, or you may know as Lil Hazy in the chat. Let's give a warm welcome to Caroline. Hello there. Hey. How are you? Good. How are you two? Doing good. Good. Denise? Glad to hear it. Denise, how are you? I'm fine. All right. <laughs> And chat, how are you all doing out there? Thank you for joining us. I see we have some friends. We have uh, Mandala, Robert Tables, Triple B, Michael Jolly, both Denise and Lily in chat too. Uh, Mayx, Sean, am I missing anybody? I think I covered so far. Everybody that's popped up in the chat, thank you for joining us today. Hope you're all having a great week. Let's start off how we normally start off Build Up Devs, why don't, before we get into the topic. Let's talk about win of the week, W-O-T-W. Lily, do you have a, I'm putting you on the spot. I should have told you beforehand, like prepping for this, like, hey. But folks, if you don't know, while I'm, while I'm, let me explain what win of the week is for folks, and then I'll give you some time to think about it, both Denise and Lily. Um, folks, if you're not familiar with this or you're new to the stream, welcome in. We're happy to have you here. Build Up Devs is a community about just really having this positive mentality, building each other up instead of chairing each other down in this community. And one of the things that helps us kind of get into that right mindset is thinking about wins of the week. And what, what that means is instead of maybe dwelling on the negative stuff or something bad that maybe happened, it's not to be naive or ignorant that that does happen, but it's more so of not spending too much time dwelling on that. And instead thinking about what are the things that are positive that happen? What are the things that maybe you're grateful for? Big or small. Um, my go-to tends to always be about food because it's simple enough and I'm happy and I join, enjoy food um, like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. If I can have that. So... I'll kick things off with my win of the week. I'm just happy that the family is still safe and healthy and uh, throughout this week, and hopefully we can keep it up that way moving forward. So, um, yeah, that's that's my main my main win of the week this week. How about you both? Caroline, you got one for us? Did, you, did that give yeah, you some time? Yeah, I, I do. First, on that note, the peanut butter and jelly, ever since I mentioned that, I started doing that, and I love it. I feel like I've missed out for years. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's just like finally started it's like man that's freaking delicious so I, I have it quite i love it i absolutely love it peanut butter is just amazing i know i, I it's, <laughs> oh it's one of my my weak weaknesses is peanut butter um i love it and have you tried any of the variations like putting pretzels in there or oh god no, no? no. I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna take it slow and easy here this adventure <laughs> you know i don't i i hear you because it took me many years to even discover these possibilities and i think it's well worth enjoying just a plain old peanut butter and jelly sandwich first for a while yeah, yeah I've, I've done banana and peanut butter, and that was pretty delicious too, but Ooh. not on a sandwich, just as a snack. Well, I'll, pretty... I'll tell you one thing. Top tier level peanut butter <laughs> jelly sandwich yeah. making, you add a chocolate chip cookie, and it is oh my God. phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal. Okay? But enough uh, about that. What is your win of yeah. the week? Uh, I got a commander deck for Magic the Gathering, and I get to play it, I think, tomorrow evening. So I'm very excited. <laughs> nice. So for folks that maybe aren't familiar, what is a commander deck? A commander deck is... A, so Magic the Gathering is, is a pretty popular card game that people play. You can play it online now on Arena. I love to do both. Recently got into Arena and just been playing that way too much. But a commander deck is a version of it where you get 99 cards all built around one specific commander, one specific card. And so we oh. we ordered ours and I finally got mine in and I'm going to kick my husband's butt. Oh, <laughs> fighting words right there. Nice. <laughs> well, that's nice. That sounds like a lot of fun. It's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> and Denise, what do you have a win of the week you'd like to share with everybody? Um, I don't have a win, uh, but... I did receive my Raspberry Pi Zero and some of the other um, parts that I had ordered after one month. They had been lying in customs for a while. Mm. Um, 
because of the Brexit that you know now yeah. we have to pay a little bit of fees and then have to just wait a bit. So I finally got them. Oh, so that's a win. I like how you start it with. Yeah. I don't have a win, <laughs> no, but a then win. but then something positive. But that's it's not a big deal. I mean, but that's <laughs> that's the whole point, Anish. Come on, you should know a this. Package. That's it. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's a package that you're happy to receive that you've been waiting yeah. for. Don't downplay it, my friend. Come on. I tell you, when the, the biggest week, the win would be when I received the the normal readers. Um, Dead Stranding figurine, like in November or December. Yep. Yeah. That would be the one. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's also a good win. So you got two. Look at that. And then look, Mandala's reminding you, you finished West Boss Course. Yeah, almost. So, I'm in the end. Um, nice. That's a lot, man. We're still working on Denise's mindset with this win of the week thing, as you can tell, folks. <laughs> we got this. <laughs> We'll get it can there. be hard. It yeah. can be really tricky to do it. So it's, I, it's nice. Though. Yes, that's a very good point. Very good point. Uh, so folks in the chat, I see Sean joined us. Good to see you, WW Sean 08. Peanut butter and honey is great. Yes. Uh, Reese's Max. Reese's is amazing. Like putting Reese's on the on on the PB and J. Oh man, maybe that's the next level for me. I've already <laughs> I've, I've achieved cookie on the sandwich status, but I need to take it up a level. <laughs> um well good 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 <laughs> that's awesome all right so i guess that's that's good so feel free folks if you have some wins that you want to share with us in the chat drop them in there let us know spread the good vibes with us and uh we will we'll pick up on them and comment on them but let's jump into our topic for today what do you say Anish and caroline sure all let's right so benefits of techno technical communities tech communities what uh what what does that mean what what are what are tech communities i guess what Let's start with that. I think everybody can kind of decide that for their own a little bit, because I've seen tech communities that are absolutely massive, like the JavaScript community, yeah. or incredibly tiny, like a, the small local meetup and anything in between. I think as long as it's a community of folks that are interested in something tech related, it would community or it would qualify as a community. Okay. Like build up devs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> no, you yeah, so I'm not trying to ask like silly questions, but you know, maybe people no, don't yeah. know, right? Um, of so yeah, no, okay. So, and then what would you say? I guess what what are what are some of the? Let's start with one benefit of being a part of a tech community. Like, how does why would somebody want to join a tech community? Connection, connection is a huge one. A okay. lot of people nowadays, especially when they're job searching, they do it through their connection, through networking. And that's one massive, massive benefit of joining a tech community is that com connection, that networking. Nice. Yeah, I think, um, you know, uh, you, you saying connection has me reflecting back on like, even on Twitch, the tech community mm -hmm. there, right? That's to yeah. me, another community. The connections that I've made with folks like yourself, uh, mm -hmm. people in the chat here, Robert Table, Sean, and, and other yeah. folks too, like I normally would not have made those connections had it not been for the tech community on Twitch. Mm -hmm. So that is, that they're right, right there is a perfect example that you're reminding me of the benefits that I've been seeing of a tech community like that. Yeah. What about you, Denise? Have you found you've made some connections because of tech communities? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, lots. I mean, everything I, that I have in the, I've gotten so far, like my job, and Instagram followers, whatever, like mm -hmm. friends, everyone is, is through the tech communities I've been part of. Um, there is not, there is no way, uh, like an official way that you join a community. I just, you just hang around with these folks <laughs> for like long enough and, and that's just community yeah. for you. I mean, and, and that's how it, it happened for me. Yeah, for sure. I also want to remind folks in the chat too, that this, while, you know, Anish and I and Caroline are here on the stream talking about this. This is about being a discussion. So we mm -hmm. want to hear what your thoughts are as well. And I see some folks in the chat are sharing some stuff like that. Like Robert Taylor saying Twitch connections to tech communities has been getting me through the pandemic. Oh yeah. Uh, oh boy. Yeah. Like <laughs> I feel definitely, definitely feel that. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's been, <laughs> it's been one of those saving graces almost, you know, to some degree of at least still getting that interaction with other people, uh, since we're not able to necessarily get as much of that as we would prior to the pandemic coming around. Right. 
Absolutely. It's also one of the, I don't want to say positive things about this whole thing, but it is a little bit of a positive vein is that we were able to experience tech communities we weren't even either aware of or weren't local enough to. So now to do that, I've been to tech meetups in Germany because I was curious how, how my fellow Germans are doing it compared to American ones. And then I've been to a Canadian one user group because I wanted to check it out. And it's just something I wouldn't have been able prior to having it online. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. That, that's another amazing thing too, right? With this is especially that, well, I like how you put it in terms of, uh, you know, if you, if you will, one of the good things that come out of this, because I mean, yeah. it's kind of that expression glass half full or glass half yeah. empty. How do you, how do you view that, that glass of water that you might have? And, uh, it's not to ignore again, kind of like what we were talking about with win of the week. It's not to ignore that there are negative things as a result of like the mm -hmm. pandemic, but we can also maybe see the positive change that maybe it's driving for us to help out with like such as this, making new connections that we wouldn't have prior to this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have a question from Robert Tables in the chat. Yes. Carrie, <laughs> communications in tech communities are often much more text-based than they sync. This causes many misunderstandings and problems. Any advice for learning or observing how a new community you join tends to operate? It's really, oh God, okay, so the best advice is almost trial by fire. Jump <laughs> in, start interacting with people and see how it goes. Obviously be polite, be be respectful, but there is a lot of people suggest to really sit back and observe, but I don't believe in that process because once you sit and observe for a long time, it can feel almost overwhelming to start interacting with people. Lurking is great, it, it's absolutely fantastic if you don't plan on joining at a later point with quite a bit of, of ideas and things like that. So I, I'm very firmly a believer of jump in, jump on in, start talking, start making connections, but be open to uh, to answers you receive. If you, if you notice that people aren't as receptive to you, then maybe double check, hey, is it the community? Do I just not fit in? Or is it something about the way I'm presenting myself? And that's something I definitely had to learn. And I'm, I'm sure all of you guys and, and Robert Tables even have noticed that when I was still with the life coders, that a lot of times I stuck my foot in my mouth because of the way I phrased things and wasn't really considering how it would be read. And so it was a constant, almost daily learning experience for me of how can I rephrase this? How can I put this better? How am I going to do this better than the next time? And as long as people are open to that, of, of the feedback they may receive, then I think it'll be just fine and just jump right in, be respectful, be polite and understand that people are busy. That's a big one. I've a lot of times been faced with people not understanding that I'm busy mm -hmm. at all <laughs> and just peppering away at me and then being upset when I don't respond within half an hour, hour. It's like, I'm sorry, I checked this once a day, if even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that brings up the next question that, that I have for you is, uh, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts and Thanish too, let me know. Um, in terms of that whole, you know, communication and, and trying to be conscious of how other people might read into what you're sharing, like the mm -hmm. text that you meant, you know, sometimes the folks will push back a bit. When, like, let's say you, we reach out to somebody and say, Hey, the way you phrase that is kind of, you know, like it's coming off yeah. the wrong way. And they're going to be like, well, that's, that's the way just because you're thinking about it that way. Why are you, yeah. why is your mindset in that frame of mind? Or I guess mm -hmm. rather that's interpreting it that way, you know? Yeah. And so what are your, what are your thoughts on dealing with that type of situation where somebody might be in a community, you're trying to be part of it yeah. and you get that kind of, I don't know, pushback, I guess is maybe the right yeah. word to put it. Yeah. That That's going to depend off how aggressive that pushback is. If that pushback is extremely aggressive, I tend to just drop it. It's not worth my time to try to convince somebody. Of, of something I understand. But at the same time, I also try to understand if this could be a cultural difference because mm. I'm dealing with so many people from different cultures that I've been told I'm very, very direct. I do not understand small talk mm. <laughs> to this day. <laughs> I, especially in emails, I've been, I've been getting a lot of flack for that in previous jobs because I would just, I wouldn't even start with good morning. I would say, Steve, I need this, 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 and this. <laughs> and then they would get back at me and be like, good morning, Caroline. I'm good. How are you? And <laughs> go from there. And so that's kind of the, where, where I had to take a step back of like, oh yeah, okay. Certain people just don't work that way. I get that and I'm working on that. But it's really coming down to the, for lack of better wording, the aggressiveness of the pushback. If the pushback is not super aggressive, but there seems to be a definite disconnect, I would 
go back with that person and probably ask for them to join me in a voice chat so we can actually discuss it as that tends to be easier because you can hear the tone yeah. that somebody that yeah. somebody says something with and that I've in the past I've had that had to do that a couple of times and have been wanting to do that a couple of times and that really seemed to work to just put it out there in person and then typically it's almost like so if you imagine right a fence a dog on each side they bark at each other they bark at each other you remove the fence they're just like oh hello you're an actual person and so when you get into a voice chat or even a video chat with a person it really does seem to to bring that into the foreground again to people that they are interacting with another human being and that tends to remove a lot of the aggression right out of it oh my gosh that was fantastic the <laughs> the whole dog analogy because i you know i have dogs of my own and there's yeah. something about that fence being yeah there. it really is <laughs> Meanwhile, like, like for instance, my neighbor, my dog will bark, his bower will bark his head off of my neighbor whenever it's like he knows that the neighbor is right around the fence and bower's running mm -hmm. freely in our backyard. But yeah. if I have bower out front and my neighbor's there, bower's totally chill with him. <laughs> so, I mean, like you, you uh, just made that per like it was perfect. Well yeah. done. Well done. <laughs> Denise, what are your thoughts on this too? Like, uh, you know, I, yeah. I do like this whole, can you, yeah. Can you explain what the pushback meant? I, I didn't hear that part. So the pushback was like, you know, sometimes let's say some, you're giving somebody feedback that's saying, Hey, the way you can, because it's over text, right? You don't get the context mm. or the tone of how they're, they're, they're meaning something. The way the mindset you might be in, right? Maybe something bad just happened or whatever. And you're kind of angry already. And you read something in a way that is not, it's, you interpret it poorly whatever they shared with you right so yeah. and then they're and then you tell them then they tell you like no i didn't mean it that way why are you being you know why are you reading into it that way you know what i mean and so how do how do you deal with a situation like that to kind of you know again where this being part of a new community somebody's joining in and then somebody reads things reads a little bit into something that somebody said in a negative way yeah i would try to explain as nice as i can i mean this is how things are i didn't mean it that's it that's the end of it but it's sometimes and it happens sometimes that people are not ready to receive any explanation whatsoever they've already made up their mind and they just wants to move on I and mean, that can happen too. i mean at that point you just you just quit that's it mm -hmm. i got you yeah there's definitely ha i think everybody has a different kind of i don't know tipping point with that like determining how far and some of us to our of our own fault maybe go a little too far trying to make that effort when we should have probably peeled back and just let it go sooner <laughs> right yes um, also i was smirking it a little bit while you were explaining that because uh, robert tables in chat was saying question for the host is robert tables a paid hype man for the production team and why is the answer probably kappa <laughs> big budget productions <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, I see we have some some folks in the chat as well that are saying hello and popping in Finite Singularity and Phil Carbo and Frackberg, Frackberg Fracky, yes. my man, good to see you. <laughs> um, so yes, we're talking about if you're just joining us, we're talking about the benefits of tech communities. We're talking about one of the values in in joining a tech community is the, the connection you make and the networking opportunities you make with folks. And uh, and so what's what's maybe another benefit when it comes to being a part of a tech community, Lily. Education. Okay. You you will learn a lot, and you will understand. Hopefully, that you don't know shit. Sorry. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> that's, just, that's that's a big one. Not just I I experience that almost daily, but I even see that from from extremely seasoned developers when they join a new community. It's like, oh my god, I don't know anything. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> but then it's that that equal giving and learning. Uh, learning, teaching, and the mentor-mentee uh, relationship is almost automatically established in a lot of communities. All right, so we got connection, we got education. It's good. Denise, what are your thoughts on education what, being part of communities too? I know you're, you know, coming from Instagram as being yeah. one of the main communities that you've been a part of, and kind of, I would say you're one of the folks that helped build up that community there. Um, what are your thoughts on that being a benefit or can you elaborate or what's been your experience in terms of education as part of the deaf community there? Well, it was not a conscious thought that I put in. I just started sharing what I was learning and I, I along the way I met other people and I, I tried because I was a, I'm still an introvert. I don't reach out to people right away um, in person. I don't, I'm not comfortable talking to people like that, but I was, it was easier for me to talk to them online. 
and eventually I made a lot of connections uh, to the point that if I have to travel anywhere, I have friends almost in, I mean, any country, I would say, through Instagram. Like I've talked with them long enough that I can go there and then say hello and, you know, maybe go for a meal or something. Um, so that, that's a big thing. And then uh, I also found people uh, that, that if I know more people from, let's say, one city, that I can actually bring those people together as well. And it has happened when I, I mean, I traveled to Helsinki and I had to, I, I knew two developers. They didn't know each other. So I just, you know, we all met together and, and, and eventually like they got to hang out and, um, and just learn what they were doing. Uh, it was a very nice experience. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That is definitely, uh, again, pre pandemic here, but like one of the benefits of yeah. like the Twitch community, -pandemic. Yeah, yeah. one of the benefits of Twitch community is I, I, there's a few people like Sean in the chat. Uh, another buddy, he goes by Rival on Twitch as well. I met in person. Sean, I met a couple times when I've gone out to Seattle. Um, mm -hmm. And it's like, it's just awesome to me to be able to like, have that, like connect with somebody like virtually like this and then have the opportunity that if I'm in the area, I, mm -hmm. you know, meet up and get a coffee or a drink or whatever, you know, is comfortable for everybody and, and get to know each other more. So, um, yeah, I'm glad to hear that that's been, that was the case again, you know, pre-pandemic for you Nisha, as well yeah yeah what about you carrie uh, have you had have you oh go ahead oh. oh i was gonna say robert tables had an interesting question a little bit ago oh, did I miss uh, have you found that people in tech communities are starting to understand and show more empathy this far into the pandemic was it not feeling like the needle is moving much still mm. oh we also got rated <laughs> oh we did we did oh look at that <laughs> Hey, Raiders. <laughs> Hello, Raiders. And th thank you for alerting me to that, Carrie. <laughs> Look, Carrie's on top. Of Carrie, you should just host the stream. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jay, for rating us. I don't know. I'm fumbling my words right now. Holy cow. <laughs> it's uh, very exciting. <laughs> yes, very exciting. Jay, thank you so much for rating us. And welcome, everybody, from Jay's stream. If this is your first time into the Build Up Devs stream and community, welcome. We're happy to have you here. Um, build up devs is a community about building each other up, hence the name, instead of tearing each other down. And we like to talk about things that are the human side of being developers is what we do here on the channel. And today we have our very special guest, as you can see, Carrie, Lil Lily Hazel <laughs> in, on, in the Twitch world. <laughs> and um, uh, oh man, we got to get the shout out commands working on this channel too. Note to self. Thanks yeah. Robert Tables One for day. pointing that out. One day. <laughs> um, so thank you for joining us. And we're talking about the benefits of being in tech communities today. So far, we've talked about one of the benefits being connection. Another one Carrie was just recently talking about is education. And then Robert Tables had a question for us and we're taking questions. These live streams are about us discussing together. So while we are on your screens right now, the idea is we're gonna be listening to you as well and hearing your input and your perspective on these topics that we're discussing. So if you have thoughts on other values or things to add in terms of the values that we brought up already, like making connections through tech communities or getting education through tech communities. You have some examples or your experience that you want to share, drop them in the chat. We'll read them out. Um, so Carrie, you were saying Robert tables and thanks again, Jay, for the raid. Appreciate it, man. Um, you were saying Robert tables had a good question about, yeah, he's asking about empathy. Community. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's been really interesting and it's varied wildly from community to community that I'm a part of some communities were, super fast in terms of, you know, in at the end of February, when, when last year, when we started to be able to see, oh, this is definitely heading this way, when it was quite obvious what was going to happen, some communities really stepped it up, immediately went to online, do everything online, check in with the people as the anxiety really started kicking up. Hmm. And some communities, I'm in communities now that, that last week or two weeks ago, they did their very first wellness check. Their very first, hmm. like, how are you guys doing, by yeah. the way? And so it's it was, absolutely fascinating just how different that was and and quite honestly i did think more of the of the companies or the, rather the communities not companies the community said that it earlier even if you weren't that early in february but i would expect a community by by april may june last year to have started doing that and started stressing that empathy a little bit mm. and the same is to be said for companies there's companies that caught a lot of fire online because they still don't get it. They still don't understand that their employees are human. And there's companies that have been absolutely amazing of upping the mental health days that their employees are getting, where there's just no questions asked anymore. You need a day off, you take a day off. That's fine. 
And so it's been it's been quite fascinating. And, and I hope that most people in chat are with the company that understands it and are in communities that understand it a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Denise, what about you? Have you, you know, speaking of empathy here, right? And thank you, Rob Tables, yeah. for the question. What's been your experience, maybe at your own company, if you're willing to share, in terms of like yeah. empathizing with you being a human and everything that's going on right now? Um, I, I work for a Finnish company, and mostly most of the uh, companies in the Nordic region are, are very great with mental health and all those things. So we've always been remote, uh, but since the pandemic started, like last year, uh, we were immediately told that you know you have access, free access to online therapy if you need. Um, subscribe to any of the streaming services, um, not just entertainment, but books or music or you know um, audio books, whatever you want. And you know you will pay for all those things as long as you know this goes on. Yeah. So that was a good thing um, nice. for them to do that. And and just outside of all of that, I mean, I, I I reached out to some of the friends on on Twitter and on Instagram, and they were kind enough to listen and you know just talk through the whole time, and that's been good. Nice. I'm glad to hear that. So and and again, still on empathy here. Yeah. If and this is maybe a tough question, because I don't know that I have an answer to it either, but or any of the questions that I have for that matter. Um, <laughs> when it comes to empathy, like and, and Carrie, you were mentioning that there's some communities that took a while to even get to that point to even mm -hmm. think about that. How how do we teach that? How do we make that more? I don't know, maybe for lack of a better term, norm, normalized a bit, you know, yeah. so that people like what are your thoughts on that? What are maybe some steps you can think of? that we as a community in build up devs or other tech mm -hmm. communities can like, start incorporating that more. In terms of teaching empathy, that's where I'm a little bit of a negative Nelly. I don't think you can teach empathy. I think a person has to have it inside them already, hmm. but you can nurture it. So if it's there, but somebody doesn't really know how to do it or how to, how to not be weird about it, I think you can foster that. But if somebody just doesn't have it in them or just, it is just isn't a part of, of of them, then I don't think you can really teach it. In terms of fostering it, though, I think the Bald Bearded Builder actually started a thing on, on his Discord. That's where I, uh, I saw it first of little wellness checks with just little emote hearts, like a certain color means you're feeling a certain way. And that has really started to get people talking to where it's just like, all right. And now people in his community particularly check in with each other quite frequently, which is fantastic. And I think it's just, if people receive a question about their wellness, I feel like they're passing it on to other people because it made them feel good. And I've seen, I've even seen that happening where it's like, wow, somebody asked me how I'm feeling. I'm gonna ask so-and-so how they're feeling. And just almost like kindness, right? You spread kindness that way. I think you can spread empathy that way as well. Wow, I love that. You, you have a way with expressing these things. And I'm just, I'm <laughs> glad. I'm, we gotta clip oh, all goodness. these things so that we can share them with people. Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. You bring up a good point. I think anytime, in my experience, anytime somebody has checked in on me, it got it definitely got me thinking, oh, you know, I haven't checked in with somebody in a while. Let me see how they're doing. In fact, I just did that the other day. So mm -hmm. that's a very good point. The more we check in with each other, the more that might spread. I love that. Um, you did mention one thing that stood out to me was you're yeah. saying, uh, I forget exactly how you put it. You were saying something to the point of like, so long as somebody isn't weird about empathy. What, what are, mm -hmm. so I'm very much into like learning to be self-aware and trying to recognize those. And I know I can be weird, awkward, cringy. Mm -hmm. how, how, can, uh, <laughs> how can we help people know when they're being weird about empathy? What are some examples of that, if you will? I, th I think being honest goes a long way. Not, not being unkind, but being honest. I, I've had people who meant extremely well, but they were checking in on me every day. And that was stressing me out more than it helped. Mm. And so I was just honest with them. I was like, hey, I super, super appreciate you thinking about me. I love that you check in with me. However, I'm extremely busy due to work and studying and this and that. Could we maybe postpone this check-in to next week? Yeah. And so it's just kind of almost teaching people a little bit of, hey, maybe this works. Or then sometimes people just ask way too personal questions, right? It's like, oh, I've noticed you haven't been drinking water. Are you feeling all right? But how's your hydration levels? Have you been <laughs> to the doctor lately? Like, um, <laughs> I, 
<laughs> just forgot to refill my water. There's really nothing else going on here, man. But just, just that that weirdness a little bit. And I've also heard from some people that feel weird about checking in with other people. And I think that's where that came in, what I mentioned at the beginning of it. When you join a community, just start interacting with them, start getting a feel for it. And unless somebody tells you, don't don't be afraid. And even when somebody tells you, don't be afraid or put off, just take that as a learning opportunity. You know, Carrie, I've noticed your uh, heart rate has increased while we were on the stream, and I wanted you know, <laughs> just example, another Creepy. example. Yeah, being weird. <laughs> like, how do you know? Uh, I don't. I don't. I'm just making it. Um, yeah. uh, you were actually right on the point, though. Right on the money. It's like it really has. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sorry. Well, look, we need to we need to pull that back then. <laughs> That's fine. Um, uh. The niche. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, being, you know, the, going back to the original question when it comes to empathy. Do you feel? Um, do you feel that um sorry i'm reading the chat getting distracted <laughs> do you yeah. do you feel that like empathy can be taught or what are your thoughts on that uh, i don't think it can be taught no okay. um but i agree with uh, lily i mean you can we can hope i mean people will just learn at some point i mean it doesn't happen all the time so i think that begs the question to both of you then like so are people do you think naturally born with that kind of emotion or like that's what you know i know i'm getting deep here but it, these are the thoughts that are coming to mind for me right now it's like well how does empathy come to be a thing in, in at all amongst humans right maybe it's genetic maybe mm -hmm. that's how some people are i mean yeah. um i'm one of the uh, person that i i don't normally cry but when i'm watching something just random um, acts of human kindness on on anywhere uh, I get emotional yeah. and I, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just seeing something nice. That's it. Yeah. I would agree with that. I think it's a, uh, it's gotta be something more internal, whether genetics or just somehow, somehow from, from the very beginnings, cause it's, that sounds really bad, but, but one of my parents was not empathetic at all. It's not, it's not emotional at all. And the other one is, fairly emotional but i'm really uh, i feel like I, I got too much of that <laughs> so i can be too empathetic which is kind of the other side of that that i want to caution people too if you're feeling super empathetic make sure you take care of yourself first i had empathy burnout last year mm. and it took me forever to understand that that's what it was and then was extremely hard to to take time away from everything i didn't I didn't log into any social media, including Discord or anything else. I didn't watch Twitch. I just took care of myself for a while. And that really helped. And now I really measure that of, hey, do I have that in me to help this person right now or not? And so that's something to to consider too. It's don't burn yourself out. Don't right? Don't just set yourself on fire to keep somebody else warm. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. And that has me thinking like, e that means even having the disconnect from these tech communities that you might be a part of and feeling obligations there. If you need to take a break and step away, mm -hmm. by all means, you should do that for your own well-being. Because otherwise, you're not able to contribute or be part of that, bring yourself fully to that community like you were. I see we have some uh, comments in the chat. Let's catch up with folks there a little yeah. bit too. So thank you, everybody, again for joining. And let's hear your thoughts on this. I see um, I'm jumping around. So feel free to tag me, do at Clarkio so that I can see it too. Girl with the box says, I feel like uh, his, oh, I think everyone does have some level of empathy in them, but not everyone knows how to express it, especially in a professional context. Yeah, I feel you on that. Uh, Girl with the Box went on also to say, I feel like historically there wasn't much attention placed on bettering relationships at work, and maybe some people are still in mm. that mindset. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, finite singularity. I think there is also a difference between emotional and empathetic. Uh, empathy is the ability to walk in another's shoes. Someone can be emotional, but not empathetic and vice versa. Yeah, very good point. Yeah. Clarify that. Robert Tables with another question for us. Thank you, Robert Tables, for the questions. Have you found <laughs> diving into tech communities has made your work interactions better or worse because colleagues may not be learning these new communication methods as quickly as you? Both. <laughs> ah, here we go. <laughs> um, with with some communities or with with, with some colleagues, rather, it's done wonders because it's something they've been passionate about that I didn't know. I didn't know they were passionate about communities and finding communities. So once I get started talking about that, we really connected and it was really, really fun and we learned new things together. But then with others, they just don't get it. Mm. <laughs> they they either aren't into learning something new, the the uh, the the age old phrase of why fix what isn't broken. 
is can really be a headache in the tech field <laughs> extremely so <laughs> so it's been i've really experienced both that way i, I would say it's leaning probably more towards the uh, it's made it better because the, the people that i work with that i interact with on a daily basis it's definitely made those relationships better but then the people i don't interact with all the time it hasn't necessarily made it worse but they just don't get it and that's caused more frustration for me gotcha yeah and denise how about you same question. Diving into tech communities, has that made yeah. your work interactions better or worse with your colleagues? It has, uh, because uh, until then, like I had no idea if I was, you know, if I had the right to even change something or ask for something mm -hmm. that's going on in the work. But like learning and lis listening to all these people sharing their, you know, experiences, you know, where they work and how they deal with these things and the issues that come up, I was able to, you know, talk to my manager or people a boss just like you know that this is a real problem we need to fix this thing and you know i was able to fix those things uh, just by talking excellent excellent all right so we talked about connection being a benefit of tech communities education are there others that come to mind in terms of benefits of being a part of a tech community a member you have a lot of fun i think the entertainment value goes kind of through the roof because you can you can work together on projects which is always fantastic, but you can even discover hobbies together, um, right? A lot of the, the tech communities that I'm a part of, they share outside of computer hobbies, so to speak. So people are sewing, knitting, crocheting. I know Robert Tables learned knitting with another programmer together. I believe it was knitting, correct me if I'm wrong, Robert Tables. Uh, but that was absolutely amazing to see. And it got me started because I watched him do that. It's like, oh my God, this is amazing. I never thought I would want to do this until I did that. And so I think it's discovering new hobbies. I've, I've found a lot of new hobbies, a lot of new things I'm interested in due to tech communities. Excellent. That's awesome. And yeah, like, I mean, it's also kind of get to know, kind of awesome or is awesome to get to know people. <laughs> Uh, yeah. beyond just the, the tech part of things, right? I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of people kind of come at the door with, come into the door rather with like, hey, I do programming or whatever, I, mm -hmm. or I'm part of it, I'm around it. And then you learn more about them that like, oh, I also do woodworking or knitting or that kind of stuff. And then, you know, you may hit on that same common ground with somebody and connect more too. I like that. What about you, Denise? Have you experienced that in terms of being part of communities? What's, what's some of the fun or entertainment value you've gotten out of a tech community? Well, I met you. Uh, that's one thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm entertaining you. I'm glad. I'm glad. That's what I set out to yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, every Monday. Uh, it's true. But other than that, like I, I, I got some hobbies. Like, and I learned about the Raspberry and the Pi projects and what people are building. Get me motivated to, you know, see those and just, you know, try something new. Uh, even games. People recommend games all the time. Uh, books. A lot of things. Nice. Um, cool. Yeah. All right. So we, that's three different benefits we've outlined. Are there more? Can, can we, how I'm many sure can we get up to? More. Yeah. There are more. There On are Instagram, more. I've seen people finding their better half. I mean, oh, it's very yeah. rare. That's but it right. Happened. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. As long as you don't approach it like, Tinder on crack, yeah. you, you can't approach, just put your shot out there. Like, hey, you like tech, I like tech, let's get married. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> uh, well, that's, well, I mean, yes, that's awesome to hear, but yeah, don't do that. Don't, uh, don't get, don't, don't take it to that level. <laughs> oh God, Robert Tables, I have some horror stories for you in that regard, my God. And that's mm. Robert Tables' comment, wait, LinkedIn isn't Tinder, Kappa? Yeah, <laughs> no. Oh, Lordy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm, I'm just listing these off and I have another place to go with this topic too, but I want to make yeah. sure we cover all the benefits that we can think of and, and chat. If you have ideas, please tell us, you know, let us know. What do you think that we haven't covered yet? That's a benefit you found being part of tech communities that you're a part of, whatever that may be. Yeah. Um, uh, Sean, Sean and chat saying, yeah, don't get, don't be creepy, but my friend found their husband on Twitter. Hey, I mean, Aww. yeah, more power to them. I think that's awesome yeah. that people, again, People that normally would not have maybe connected had it not been mm -hmm. for a platform like that. So that's awesome. That's the positive things of, of that, of social media too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so have we exhausted, uh, all at least, uh, thoughts on, <laughs> on benefits of tech as a, as a member, let's think of it that way, right? Like the being big part ones. Of it. Yeah. 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 All right. So if let's, let's take it a different angle now, right? Let's, okay. let's go with, Hey, you're looking to start a community around X in 
whatever that may be. Let's say maybe knitting in in tech communities too. But like, it's a it's a crossover, right? Mm -hmm. Is that oh, is that like a pun crossover? Is a crossover like a knitting moon maneuver potentially? I don't know. Our tables, tell our us. tables. Let me know. Did I did I just make a pun without punning? I don't know. Um, sorry. <laughs> Corny jokes is my, my, my forte. Um, but like, so if somebody wants to get started built, creating a tech community or any community for that matter, right? Mm -hmm. What are, what are some ways they can get started? First, I would recommend they understand for themselves what they want out of it. That's I've, I've seen a lot of communities that just kind of flounder because they have no goals. That isn't like you don't have to have a massive goal, but you, you should know whether your goal is to connect people, whether your goal is to work on projects together, whether your goal is education or hobbies outside, right? Replacing the water cooler as uh, who just put it that way. Uh, Finance Singularity just said, right, it's, it's, it replaces the water cooler essentially. If that's just what you want to do, that's great, but you need to have that goal in mind, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So you can foster what you want what what you want out of it and i think that's the number one thing it's a lot of people are like well how do you build a community with nobody in there you you can you just need to know what the goal is okay. and so i think once you have that goal you can start telling your friends about it tell your family about it a big thing that i've noticed is people who want to build communities they're afraid to tell their friends and family about it to a degree if you know your especially your family really well and understand they wouldn't be supportive don't tell them but i feel that you should tell your friends and you should be proud of it you don't have to force them into joining but i think that that you should at least be proud of it enough to to tell them okay i like all that i'm, I'm taking notes and i'm sending them in the chat even though I, I accidentally <laughs> sent them in the chat because i'm using the chat as like my note taker right now <laughs> because my PC is crawling and I don't want to open up another app to take notes. Sorry, but there's the full context for everybody. Um, so that's what, that's what you hear me typing through. And that's what I'm going to send in the chat. It's actually not a bad idea. That way everybody's getting it in text format too. And can, <laughs> um, I, I want to dive deeper a little bit on your, the, the number one that you said there, right? What are your yeah. goals? How does somebody kind of figure out what that is? Cause maybe like, you know, you yeah. just, you just think like, Hey, I would love to start a community. I do this type of programming, you know, yeah. th and that might be the extent of it. So like, how do you figure out like what the, go what a goal should be? What, you know, how do you dive deeper into that and tease that out of what your intentions are with it? Well, a good thing to do is look at your passions. If you're naturally passionate about teaching people, then very likely that'll translate into your community if wanting as wanting to be in an educational community. And the other thing is you can always look at communities that you've seen that you're a part of and notice something that was missing. Hmm. And go from there. It's like, man, I really wish they would have put a focus on that or this. And then just run with that. If that's what you love about it, run with it. It doesn't mean you can't have other things in your community as well. But having that that primary goal, the 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 thing that that makes you excited to work on it, that makes you excited to want to grow your community, I think that's gonna go a long way to keep get you over these humps you're going to experience of stagnancy of of maybe some negative feedback for yourself and it's not growing as fast as you'd like but being passionate about your community and your goal will get you through those most of the time i like that a lot yeah i, I hadn't thought about that before to be honest with you like thinking mm -hmm. about being part of other communities and seeing there's this gap mm -hmm. that maybe you, you can help fill by creating community from that um, mm -hmm. that's pretty eye-opening for me right there um Denise, what are your thoughts <laughs> I know I keep putting you on the spot, but I, I want to hear you. I want to hear you. Thinking. Your, yeah, what you're thinking. All right. So I've not built any community myself. I mean, we did this build up there. I mean, it was, <laughs> but we still don't think of, of it as a community. I mean, we just hang out every week and, and that's it. We don't do much. Uh, yeah. We have no idea what goal, we're doing. Yeah. When it comes, honestly, when it comes to building the we just, yeah. <laughs> 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 that's great. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. But we had some goals, like uh, we just wanted to help other people, um, just spread the positivity, and just uh, because people are being very toxic online and you know rude, and you just we just wanted to get away from all those things. Hey, John is here. Yeah, I just saw him. <laughs> uh, so that's why we started that. Yeah, you yeah. know. Oh, go ahead, Carrie. Oh, I was going to say, the way John just put that is is absolutely fantastic. I like that. I like the way that was just put there. 
Uh, so it's Martin Soft from Instagram. Our friend jumped over to Twitch with us. Good to see you, John. John says in chat, starting a community is a bit like starting a side project. Scratching your own itch will give you the motivation to start as well as keep going. Mm -hmm. Fantastically put, yes. John started the, the Friday Dev drinks on nice. Instagram. He did, and cheers. Or I yeah. guess I have a cup and I could, have, I could have just done that. I know, tomorrow. It's not <laughs> it's quite Thursday. Friday yet. <laughs> so it's Friday Eve. Come on. That's true. <laughs> um, oh, man, I keep losing my train of thought. How can I be a host and be like this? What is wrong with me? Well, with in terms of build of devs, <laughs> the niche is right. Yeah, like we, at one, at finally at one point, what the goal, we, we gathered around that goal just kind of organically because of what was going on on Instagram at the time. And I think to some degree still happens where this, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, on any platform, so not to just, you know, kind of rag on Instagram, but any platform is there's a lot of superficial NISC materialistic type of things going yeah. on there, which is just part of human culture globally, I think, to some degree. And, uh, but it got to a point where it was kind of toxic, where people are just trying to tear each other down. And it was like, let's flip this on its head, because this is just yeah. going to keep going in a bad direction. And I feel like we've had it, an impact, and I, at least I hope we have in terms of that. And that's kind of been the center goal of it and trying to stay true to that too. Like, even though lots of folks come like that are part of it, um, have ideas and, and like suggestions for us to do things. It's, we're constantly having to check with that and be like, that sounds great, but does it actually keep us in line with what that mm -hmm. goal is too? Right. You know, like yeah. for instance, you know, people thinking, um, uh, you know, like, making things and, and financially doing stuff. And it's like, well, we're not looking, you know, this isn't an organization kind of thing. This is just a group of people that are wanting to have a positive impact and like propagate that more. Um, yeah. And it's like, how do we do that without going down that angle necessarily? That kind of stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so know what your goal is. Tell people mm -hmm. about it, even friends and family. Be proud of it yeah. enough to do to go to that level. What else? Are there, are there other pieces of advice that you would like to share with folks that are looking to start a community? Don't have too many cooks in the kitchen right from the get-go. Everybody can use some help, but the more people you bring in, the more different opinions you're going to have. Even if it's somebody that the overarching idea is the same as you have, there's likely some intricacies that they're going to differ on. And that's just that's just gonna get so much worse the more people you bring in, at least in my experience, is maybe start slow and low with just you or maybe you and one other person, maybe you and two other people. But past that, I would not bring in more people until you really establish what your mission is, what the goal is, the platform you're going to use for your community, which is just as important, really. Mm. So I think that's that's a big one that too many cooks in the kitchen can become a real problem and can really get out of hand. That's a great point, right? If you if you start going growing a little too quickly, where and mm -hmm. you don't have processes and systems in place that'll help you handle that, it could lead yeah. to to pretty negative stuff, right? Yeah. Um, this is a mood. Yeah, Robert Davis. Um, <laughs> you mentioned Carrie. You mentioned platforms. Like, how do you how do folks necessarily choose a platform to use to kind of start that community? What what would be some suggestions I, in evaluating that? I think it's gonna depend on the goal and that kind of works perfectly with the question Robert Tables was asking earlier. Um, he believes that LinkedIn is not great for tech communities. Why might he be wrong and what are better ways to find communities? So that kind of goes hand in hand with that. It's I, I love LinkedIn personally. Mm -hmm. I like it a, a lot for communities, but I did not find LinkedIn communities through LinkedIn. <laughs> I found LinkedIn community through Meetup. That's that's right now the, the biggest way I find communities I want to check out. And then of course Twitch and through an extension of that Twitter. But in terms of platforms to use, that's really going to depend on the goal and the mission. So somebody wants to do a, let's say they want to focus on wellness and they want to focus on empathy and checking in with people, a text-based text uh, platform like Discord or Slack might be a lot better for them than starting a Twitch channel where they just talk for two hours about how important it is to be empathetic or how, right, how good it is to do wellness checks. But somebody else who's more driven for education, they may want to start off on Twitch or YouTube, publish videos, and then take that into a into a different platform after that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, sorry, I'm trying to catch up on chat as well. Like, no, 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 been, that's that's, that's fine. Uh, finite singularity. That's a that's a great thought, and I was going to lead into that next. I I always caution people that want to start new communities. 
because I ask them, or oh, I tend to, I tend to ask them what they want out of community. And I've been part of so many communities now, and I've seen so many communities that if they tell me something, I typically can point them towards one and, and ask them, "Hey, have you have you seen them? Have you joined them? Maybe join them and see what it's like." Because it's honestly nobody needs 500 communities, and it's mm. it's almost like a disease to a degree. The same on Discord. I, I tr strategically, periodically purge all my Discord servers where I just leave, 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 leave the ones that don't bring me value or the ones that feel overwhelming to me personally. And it's never, ever a personal thing against the person having that server. It's never been personal. I don't think it'll ever be personal because I just don't do that. But it's when I see just Discord server after Discord server popping up and they essentially do the same thing, I, d I try to put people in touch with each other. It's like, hey, mm. do you maybe want to combine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's the other thing. Like. Um, I think exactly that finite singularity you can you can reach out to a leader of a community you're in and see if they maybe need help or if you can help well yeah help is really the operative word here hey do you need help with anything or hey i have an idea about that could we implement that what do you think about that and maybe see if you can just elevate the community you're in to the next level gotcha yeah, yeah i definitely feel you on that like it's something that i struggle with and need to be better about in terms of pruning my that like it's like collecting badges which is interesting because Slack you, tends to have a similar fatigue, I guess, that people run into where you collect Slack communities on, on there. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, and then the same thing, like I tend, and this is where, where it's like gets bad, where you start just muting everything and then it's like, well, then what's mm -hmm. the point in being in the server anymore if you're just going to mute everything, right? For um, me, it helped, the, the muting, as a side note, for me, it helped to not feel like I had to react right away. It's yeah. muted, I don't see it, and I check Discord now on my schedule and, and everything just on my schedule. And it's, that helped a lot because even the worst is truly, I agree with Robert Table, it's when it's the at everyone and at here for everything. But even the ones who don't do, I get tagged a lot in the Discord servers, but I'm also busy, but I'm also, my fault, I have Discord open during the day because I also use it for personal stuff. Mm. And so I just, I I like having it open, but I just don't want to get that dang ping in my ear yep, all the yep. time. So the muting helps because I just, twice a day, I just take through all of my servers and just see if there's messages I want to or need to respond to. You bring up a good point with the, the muting and you choose, you, you get to be intentional about yes. when you want to read a certain channel or what's going on mm -hmm. and catch up on the conversation there. Yeah. I mean, and we're kind of getting a little bit off the off the topic here, but yeah. we've we've talked about like it's kind of like with just notifications yeah. in general, like turning off mm -hmm. all notifications on your phone except for the like critical <sighs> ones that you really need, just yeah. to save that overhead in you know in your mind, because mm -hmm. otherwise, just whether you really want to or not, if you get a notification for something that is not important, you're still gonna yeah. look at it. You're still gonna look at your phone, or you're gonna still look at that. For me, the the red bubbles on the apps, oh, yeah, I have to clear them all out all the time. It's like That's why little... I don't have apps on my phone. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm a purist. Wait, are, are you telling me you use a phone just for phone calls? Phone calls and texting with my family. Yep. That is... I'm Look at that. Very, very <laughs> impressive. Very impressive. Don't Wait, are you telling me do you have a flip phone or a smartphone? I do have a flip phone in the closet right now. I have to have a smartphone because to talk with my parents, I do have to have uh, no. uh, access to something that can connect me to them gotcha, outside gotcha. of a normal phone, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Carbos says, what's a phone call? Yeah. Uh, let's catch up a little bit more in chat too. Finite Singular says, for Discord specifically, I would like it if people would turn off the part the part messages. One of the servers I was on, on had a join slash part message oh, for everyone. Oh, God, yes. Oh, that, the guild. That's finite. a thing in, the, in Discord? I didn't yeah. know that was even a thing. I've been written so many times with a screenshot that somebody took off me leaving. Oh. Lily Hazel left the server. It's like, but why? It's like, oh my God. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so folks, I guess there's some very concrete advice. Don't don't enable that feature in your, or at least don't make that channel public maybe for yeah. everyone to see if you're the owner of that Discord. And um, don't don't ask people why they left unless they wrote a message to you or or blew up a bomb before they left then obviously reach out but if they just quietly leave just let people leave <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes um also i don't know if this was what the question was related to but it was something that i was thinking when you mentioned meetup was the avenue that led you to linkedin as a community mm -hmm. for folks that maybe don't know about i assume you're talking about like meetup.com right yes yes, okay. yes yes sorry could you maybe elaborate on that and let people know what that's about and in case they weren't aware of it and they can check it out 
Yeah, so I found meetup.com through a user group I went to. So I found the user group first, <laughs> went to the user group, and then they started scheduling everything I had on meetup.com. So it's essentially, you can look, I don't know if it's worldwide, I never looked that far, but you can definitely look nationwide at meetups based on your interests, so based on location, and it shows you a nifty little calendar of when these neat meetups are, and you can RSVP to meetups, get more information about them, and the organizers of these meetups get a real good feeling of who's coming, are they bringing a guest, and, and you have profiles, so you can see kind of people interacting with that, and that's how I started really looking for that. I started, I started browsing just tech communities near me, then tech communities a little bit further away from me, and go from there really is how I did that, and then I joined wherever whatever platform they held the user group on whether that's youtube or twitch or or some other platform and then from there they would tell me about their discord or their twitter or things like that and so that's really helped me find a lot of a lot of user groups and then the other thing that i always suggest to people is ask the people in the communities you're in hey i really want to join a tech meetup does anybody have one that they like that's online right now or that you can go to however that works out in the future so yeah nice and that leads me for a question for both of you Mm -hmm. is uh it kind of we're going back a little bit on the topic of joining a community how does somebody maybe find a community of interest to them how would how should what are your what's your advice on guiding them to um find a community that they might be interested in to connect with people well since we're on twitch right now i'm gonna talk about it from a twitch viewer perspective for a second so if you're a twitch viewer just start looking so start looking at different streamers, tech streamers that you like, and then check if they're part of a team, which is typically below the stream listed, if they're part of a team, check out that team to see if, if you want to join it, if you can join it, or to get more information about it. Then ask, you can also always ask the streamers, hey, are you part of a community? I would love to learn more. Most streamers, most tech streamers especially, have their own Discord or they're part of a shared Discord, so you can easily get into that. Outside of Twitch, what I've done previously is just Google it. I just Google tech communities for JavaScript, tech communities for Python, and just go from there and just do the homework and read through. And a lot of the times they're on Twitter as well, and I like to check that just to kind of see what the vibe of the community is, because mm -hmm. I've kind of landed ass backwards into some that weren't that great. <laughs> <laughs> so now I always do my research just a little bit just to make sure that this is actually a, a group of or a community I would love to be associated with or not. Denise, what are your thoughts in terms of advice for folks joining a community or finding a community uh -huh. to join rather? I have no idea. I mean, I never went looking for any of them. I didn't even know where to look. Um, <laughs> so my first community was actually from, because I, I started my account on Treehouse mm -hmm. and Treehouse didn't have uh, an official Slack channel of their own. Yeah. But some of the people who had been using Treehouse in the past, they, they made one of their own, and I just mm. joined that one. Nice. Um, it wasn't very helpful. I mean, it was, but people were not interacting that much. Mm. And then, then I just, like, went out and I started my own Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, let's try yeah. this out. I see yeah. uh, John Martin in the chat says, meetup.com is amazing mm -hmm. for finding communities. And once you join groups, it suggests similar ones. That's That's great, too. However... I guess if you're looking to branch out a bit more, you might need to do that more manually, but that's awesome that it like helps you discover similar communities that you might find interesting and of value to you. Yes. Um, John also goes on, yes, as soon as lockdown is lifted and it becomes possible again, Corona sort of messed up our plans and we got lazy with online meetups. Yeah. I mean, you got to adjust. Talking about, the, yeah, he was talking about the, the meetup and code. Um, it, it's sort of a meetup that he... <laughs> Uh, with his friend has been doing, I think, for many years uh, in London. Nice. So people can meet once a weekend and, you know, just be together and yeah. just code whatever they're coding on. Yeah. I see Finite was also agreeing with you, Lily, that uh, they found themselves in a Slack mm -hmm. community itself being pretty toxic. There are a few helpful wizards, so I pop in to mm -hmm. ask a question, but I'm not really a community member. Yeah, I could definitely see that potentially happening, too. There's also a lot of communities for people that do kind of what I do with Udemy classes, Coursera classes, Fials, Free Code Camp, all of those. Yeah. People tend to have their own communities in there. And there's also the the downside of it that they tend to be extremely overcrowded and you might not get the value out of it that you would like to get out of it. But I would always suggest just join and get a feel for it and then, hey, you might like it. It might be exactly what you're looking for, especially if you're if you're newer to the tech field, those can be extremely helpful. 
Got it. All right, so getting back to starting a community, did we cover everything in terms of what you would give advice for folks that want to start a community? I know we talk, we one of the things I need to add is that maybe maybe you don't need to start one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't start one. It's a bad idea. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. <laughs> but I think you were saying, like, uh, maybe don't start one because you can get value out of one that exists already or if yeah. I, like something like that, right? Was the advice? Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not stepping on anybody's dream. If your dream is to have the best community out there, by all means, go for it. You, you got this. <laughs> <laughs> so any other advice in terms of starting a stream? Or sorry, a community? <laughs> Fall for stream, be prepared. No. The, the coffee is wearing <laughs> off on me. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, for starting a community, mm, moderation. Mm. Moderation is a huge one. Okay. So a lot of people don't think of moderation until it's too late, unfortunately. Or maybe not too late, but, but really late in the process, and they're already dealing with their first major fallout. So I would say if you start, as you start a community and decide on a platform, become extremely familiar with the moderation of that platform, mm -hmm. not just what the platform does in terms of, of getting people off of it that, that break your rules, but what you can do as a user of the platform. So whether that means on Twitch, knowing who your moderators are, how to ban people, how to unban people, how to time them out, what it means, what they can still interact with. Because on Twitch, you can ban somebody from chatting, they can still watch you. And so... YouTube, I'm not familiar at all with YouTube's moderation, but I'm sure they have something. But become familiar with the tool you're using in terms of moderation, but of course in general as well. But moderation, I think, is a big one because you really, you're going to want to know how to moderate your community without doing it by the seat of your pants as things are falling down around you. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> uh. Anish, yeah. any thoughts on that in terms? Of, I, we haven't, at least with Build Up Dev so far, fortunately, mm -hmm. we haven't had to. You know, we've. This is all helpful, honestly, to us too, because there's things <laughs> that we're lacking on. And again, it's because we don't know what we're doing for the most part, and we're just kind of been winging it around this whole thing. But it's been mm -hmm. super helpful to hear this this insight from you, Carrie. And I hope others, folks in chat too. Um, you know, you're seeing that as well in terms yeah. of whatever you might be trying to do and what your goals are, or even just being part of a community and trying to give them advice to make the community you're a part of better. Um, yeah, absolutely. Of, and I'm, I'm all, always around too. People can reach out to me on, on Twitter or I'm in the butt discord. They can write me. It's I'm always open to answer questions. I love this stuff. <laughs> yes. Um, was there, and I know that, you know, we are getting a little close towards the end of the time That's here. Fine. Yeah. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to discuss within this topic around the benefits of tech communities? Negatives of it. <laughs> What's that? The negatives of the it. The negatives of it. Okay. The what are some negatives of the negatives? Let me let me drop it's... this in the chat though, in terms of yeah. starting the community points that I took oh, yeah. down. Let's talk about <laughs> the ne notes. negatives. The negatives. There isn't a lot of negatives. Okay, but let's every hear it. every community will have something that drives you batty. Without a doubt, I, I used to be so naive in terms of this. Of, Every community is going to be amazing. This is going to be fantastic. There can never be anything bad. No. And then things just started really unraveling with some communities of where I had to take a step back and decide for myself, for myself personally, am I willing to deal with this for the what am I getting out of it versus what am I putting into it? And is that a net positive on my life or not? Hmm. And that's really how I've been seeing a lot of things in terms of making my life have a net positive in terms of interactions for me or something that I'm learning. And so it's, if you have a negative experience in a community, try to address it with the people that matter. It doesn't mean you have to abandon it. It just means take note of it, but take an honest note of it. It could could have been your fault, it, right? It could have been somebody else's fault. It could have been no one's fault in terms of misunderstandings because everything is in writing most of the time. But there's definitely something to be said about if you keep noticing that you dread going to a community, that you dread interacting with a community, or that there's just an overall negative emotion associated with a community, it might be time to reevaluate whether you want to be a part of it. I very, very well put and uh, feel you on that. Um, Danish, have you had a, that experience too? Like, what's been your experience in terms of communities that have a negative, uh, negative impact on you? Um, I didn't have negative, like directly. Uh, 
there were people in one of the com- old communities that I was part of. Uh, they were helpful people, uh, but they had two different um, sides. One of them just a helpful helpful developer in that community, and then the other one was a public you know, Twitter profile where they were being extremely racist um, mm-hmm. and loud about you know all those things. And and that to me like it didn't sit well with me. I mean, mm. you can't be this person or somewhere else and then just you know be a helpful person in in the death. You have to be the same person online and offline. Yeah. Um, and then it. That was the only thing. I mean, I have not experienced mm-hmm. anything else after that. Gotcha. But I left. I left. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, and that's the that's the other thing. A lot of people have, for one reason or another, the community they're part of is listed publicly, whether it's on LinkedIn via meetups that they're going to or things like that. You're gonna want to make sure, not just for yourself, but also for future employers or, or current employers, that the that what you represent about yourself online is actually what you want to represent about yourself online. So if you start seeing a community just not going the way, but you also know that that you have it listed online, maybe take it off before you decide to leave or maybe just really reevaluate of, hey, it, can this negatively reflect on me? Because I've seen communities where things spilled outside of the community that where I had to answer questions to people of why the heck are you a part of this community? Mm. Like, uh, well, they're really not that bad, <laughs> right? You start making excuses for things. So you, you sometimes that can be helpful because maybe you're not aware of, of the representation they have outside of what you understand about this community. That's happened to me before too. It's like, hey, I hear this, this, and this about this community. Is that true? No, what the heck? How did, how did you hear this? <laughs> and so kind of address that as well. But it's definitely... I think it's definitely important to keep to keep an eye open on potentially potential negative effects that being in a community and seeing a community could have, especially things like Denise said, when it's those kind of issues that can easily spill outside of the community and then you're associated with that community and that could be really detrimental to your to to your employability. Oh my gosh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I don't, I don't have more to add to that. I mean, just like, do you, <laughs> Sorry. no, no, it's good. It's good. This is, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, it's good when I'm kind of stumped like this to, cause I have nothing good. to add, but so <laughs> you mentioned now, all right, these are, there's some negatives too. Are there yeah. other negatives maybe, or specific negatives maybe that to share or look out for when it comes to tech communities? Maybe I mentioned that a little bit earlier. It said that almost that empathy overload, but I kind of want to couple that with the fear of, of missing out the FOMO. You, even if you're part of a hundred communities, it does not mean you have to check in every day. Please mm. don't do this to yourself. <laughs> get yourself, if needed, get yourself on a schedule where you check in here or there, or really just have a couple primary communities because you really, really don't want to burn yourself out. And also what I've seen, and this might sound really harsh, but I've seen people waste their entire work day on Discord. Mm. They should be working. They know they should be working, but they're not doing work at all and uh, it i've seen the various stages i've seen people proud of it that they're getting paid for not doing work and pulling one over on their boss i've seen people that pretend they're still working they're lying to themselves lying right like lying internally of no this is fine this i'm 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 doing work i'm doing research (laughs) and then uh people that just don't care anymore and when you're at that stage it's also time to reevaluate your employment (laughs) if you just don't care anymore uh, Sean, no, <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh God, please don't turn it off. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> but that's and it's the same with Twitch. I've seen a lot of that, and that a lot of the community aspect, especially in now during pandemic times, I think it can easily turn into an addiction, and I think that's something to be mindful about. Oh my gosh, yeah, definitely. I mean, just with a lot of stuff, especially social media, <laughs> just that that feeling of like having to look at it yes. having to check it <laughs> having to keep up with things uh you hit it right on um, especially and- when when your entire support system is online it mm. can definitely feel that way absolutely I said, and what sean was talking about the, sean feels called out right now for watching the stream <laughs> 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 let's catch up a little bit more with chat too um wow i, I appreciate everybody popping in here I'm, I'm struggling to keep up with it uh Finance says, I've actually been quite hesitant to start one, a Discord server for my own Twitch stream, because 
Yad syndrome. Yet another Discord server. Is that what you mean by Yad? <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah. I, I, I hear you on that. And uh, mm. Sean saying that Sean gets that as well. Finance Singular only created Discord to make it easier for people to give me feedback about my Stream Deck plugin, which has worked out pretty well. Congrats on that again, Sean, for that. Um, what else we got here? The project I'm building for slash with the tech dev community still weighing the pros and cons. Oh yeah, probably not, that's because you're working on the Tau project too, right? It might be worthwhile checking out or creating a Discord at least for that so people can connect with you around the development of that, that project. What are your thoughts on that actually? Building a tech community around a project, an open source project in this particular case, but like a project in general. For open source, I think that's fantastic. As long as the person making that Discord is open to feedback, <laughs> mm. that that's a, that's a big if there, because <laughs> I've I've definitely seen that where people want to show their projects, but boy do they hate it if if people have input. So as as long as they're open to input, or as long as it's an easy way to connect with your customers, so to speak, or or the users or the collaborators, and yeah, absolutely for that. And in that vein too, Finite was talking about Discord servers where people together work on things or people share a Discord server. I've seen those happen, not so much for tech community. I've seen a couple do it for tech, but I've seen mm. a lot of people do it just for streams where they just share a Discord together because they're real life friends and just wanted to do that. And that tends to work extremely well as long as everybody's on the same page. And that kind of where that goes back into don't have too many cooks in the kitchen right off the, right yeah. the start. Yeah, yeah. All right, I, I want to make sure we're covering everything that nice. you possibly you know, want, felt. You missed one thing. What did I miss, Anish? Go. It's a lot of work to maintain a community. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I've uh, I've been part of a pretty big Twitch community, and I've worked 7 to 80 hours a week, and I still didn't get everything done I wanted to get done. It was, it was a blast. It was an absolute blast last but oh my god that was exhausting and i don't recommend it <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you just start a community definitely look that's the other thing probably we should talk about if people if they want to start a community a, a lot of times people are, are working whether that's working from home working remotely working freelance whatever that may be but there's likely things in your life that should take precedence such as family and, and things like that make sure you actually have the time to dedicate to a community before you commit to running a community. <laughs> finite, finite, put that really well. Don't they just organically explode into awesomeness on their own? <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> that would, yeah, it would be amazing if that could just happen naturally, right? Um, just but, build it. Just build it. Yes, I know yes. that that advice. <laughs> just build it. You want to become a developer? Just build stuff. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I, I've seen it. a lot of people start Discord servers and Discord communities with the with the mindset of if I build it, they will come. No, they won't because they don't know about it. True. So it's just, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot more behind it. Well, to to your both of you noting about how much work it is. I mean, I, for me, mm -hmm. I think it's been a discovery realizing how much work it is, and and part of that realization was seeing that there are roles. You know, like for, where people at, at companies or even even you know Twitch streams where people take on a community manager role, like a paid role, mm -hmm. either part time or full time kind of thing. I didn't yeah. know that was even a thing prior to you mm -hmm. know Twitch streaming in general. So I mean, I didn't know that prior to becoming one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that that goes to show you, I guess, for folks that maybe are just hearing that for the first time, how much work is involved to where it's it's establishing like a new a new job, I think, or maybe not a new job, but like, maybe it's kind of like morphing an existing job and focusing in a certain way. I don't know. I'm still experiencing that. Um, yeah. but yeah, that's, it's interesting to me. I see we got MP, MPM, or MP, MP Macaulay. Macaulay. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. I've seen that some <laughs> communities turn into hero worship of the creators oh, yeah. and not the original or advertised goal of the community. That's very good. And point. That Have can, you seen some of that? That can get very, this is a harsh word, but very dangerous for the lack of better wording. For people who don't know, English is my second language, so sometimes I struggle with finding the right word, but dangerous in a sense of where if you land in a community that has all the markings of a great community, but you're not allowed to do input because you might want to criticize something a creator does, but it's just such an echo chamber of hero worship, mm. that's a bad deal right there. And, and I've seen a lot of communities where you just can't change that. And I think at that point, it's time to pull the shoot, get out, 
if if that's really what that is, because that shows me that it's all about the hero worship and they don't actually care about the community. And that might sound really, really harsh, but that's just been my personal experience. There's nothing wrong with admiring the people that started the Discord or that started the community, but there is something definitely wrong if you cannot make slight criticisms or ask questions. Yeah, huge red flag. Denise, mm -hmm. have, have, have you seen some of that as well in your experience with communities? Um, no, not really. I, I, the only thing I experienced in the past was the creator of the, the community or the group um, mm -hmm. kind of just abandoned the whole thing and then just left it hanging. And the whole project ended. It was, it was based around a project. We were building a, a game based on the American Civil War. And then somehow he had gathered some of the best designers and the artists around the world working on this, making the engine, um, the models. And I was working on 3D modeling. And after like a few weeks or so, I just I was just messaging him, like, hey, I, I have some questions I need to ask. And he kind of like, do you think I'm online all the time? I mean, I you know I have other things. Like this yeah. was your whole idea, so it's not mine. Mm -hmm. And then so and that can happen too. Yeah. Yeah. I think, well, again, this is probably getting a little bit off topic, but the whole idea of hero worshiping or even like, I don't, I don't, for lack of a better way, hero worship or company worshiping, right? Yeah. Um, especially in tech. There's people like people talk about Fang, Microsoft, kind of like, and like Apple, no, Apple, <laughs> Elon <laughs> Musk. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah so there becomes this like worship. I mean, again, I, I think you hit it spot on, Lily, like the admiring somebody, but taking it to like a unhealthy level. Right where the, the, they can do no wrong, and that's like they or the company too. I think there there needs to be room for people to have uh, discourse over these things, yeah. and like l people learning to take feedback. I think that's a huge mm -hmm. skill in general. Oh in gosh, yes. Right, it's like yeah. learning to be able to take feedback, um, yeah. and um, you know take action upon that feedback too. Right, like how do you yeah. how how does somebody or a company um, mm -hmm proceed after receiving that feedback and react to it mm -hmm. is very at least for me personally is very important so like it's yes. more to me it's not so much about the mistake it's how what what's the behavior and actions after a mistake that kind of oh. indicates to me more whether a community yeah. a company a person is somebody that i want to invest any more time or effort or energy into right i i've left a, a tech community on twitch before because of how feedback from the community was handled because mm. that's i did not agree with the way that was handled one bit i just i did not want to be associated with it because in in my personal opinion the way that that was handled was extremely short-sighted and extremely self-patting on the back of we can do no wrong mm. like maybe maybe everybody else is just too sensitive that's how that felt for me i'm certain that's not how it was meant unfortunately that's how that felt to me and it felt extremely tone deaf because all that would have been needed at that point is saying we're sorry we messed up and that's the approach i wanted to take it was a community that i was a community manager for i wanted to take that approach i was overruled for the lack of better wording on that approach and i decided that i was done putting my time into it it's a great community. They're still around and they're absolutely fantastic for the members. But just that little part made me reassess. And I know me other members at that point also reassessed what they wanted out of this community and whether it was worth it for them to stay or leave. And so going through that with the community together, it can make everybody grow, but it can also definitely split things up. And sometimes that's not for the worst. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um... In terms of, and again, like interrupt me and feel free to just pop yeah. in because I know this is something <laughs> that you felt very strongly about and passionate about in terms of talking about communities and mm -hmm. benefits of that. Is there anything yeah. else that we should cover before we start wrapping up? Uh, be nice to each other. <laughs> that's, a, that's a huge one. Everybody, everybody can have hard days. And when somebody tells you they have a hard day, I don't think the right answer to that is to make it a contest of who had a harder day, but rather to acknowledge, I'm sorry, you had a hard day. Here's something happy. <laughs> yes. Showing grace, right? Being, being graceful yeah. about these things. And especially during these times, it's like, Oh, come, come together. You can be miserable together. That's fine too. But 
what I've seen a lot is, oh, I had a bad day. I got laid off on my job. And then somebody else will be like, well, you think you had a bad day. My puppy ran away and my wife left me. It's like, okay. And then somebody else will try to top that. And it's like, guys, no, no, no. No, <laughs> this yeah. is not this is not the time. And then of course I, I would check in with everybody. It's like, dude, you're okay, you need any resources? Mm-hmm. And just kind of go from there. But it's try not to make that a contest. Because exactly that, Sean, you never know what's going on in someone's life. And so some people overshare, some people don't share at all. So I think just just be nice to each other is a <laughs> pretty good road to be on. Nice. Short and simple. Just be nice. Be Come nice. on, folks. <laughs> Unless they're mean to you, then don't be nice anymore. But <laughs> uh, all right, so is that about it then? Shall I think so. It? Like I said earlier, if anybody has questions, connect with me on Twitter. I'm in the butt Discord. Yeah. I got. I got. I came prepared for this at least. If you want to get in touch oh, with, nice. with Lily <laughs> on Twitter or B-U-D, GitHub. Bud. Yeah. B-U-D, yes. B-U-D, Bill, yeah. <laughs> oh yes, you, you heard butt. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the butt community. Uh, that's a whole different kind of community <laughs> yeah we're, we're not i might be part of that no i'm just kidding no 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 <laughs> if you want to get touched build with... up devs discord <laughs> exactly yes build up devs um <laughs> if you want to get in touch with carrie online on twitter cap cali on twitter cap cali on github hang out there or in the a bunch of discord servers I'm, i know many of you are already yeah. familiar with Lily, but there's some links there <laughs> to go follow along Carrie, thank you so much for joining us on this Build Up Devs Live. And thanks uh, for having me. I learned a lot. Tanisha, did you, did you, did you <laughs> yeah, learn? Yeah, me too. I feel oh, good. So, good. so thank you thanks. for helping bring the good vibes too. Always, always. If if somebody needs a funny gift, let me know. I'll send it right out. <laughs> nice. All right, folks in chat, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for your participation, your questions, and your input on these topics. We hope you have a good rest of your day. That's it for us here on Build Up Devs Live. As really quick logistics wise, I don't know when the next live is going to be because I have certain life events coming up that's going to have me a little tied up. So, but keep in touch if you want to do that and know and be alerted at least when things go live. The, the Discord is a great way to do that. And here is the link for the invite for that. Or, you know, on social media, if that's probably how you connected with us in the first place, you can still do that too. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>